Hey, it's me. I'm in my feelings yet again, but I think this world would be a much better place if we shared our lows just as frequently as we shared our highs, so as not to demonize any bit of this human experience, so that we can be present through every single moment and not wish away or avert our gaze from anything, and actually just know that every death cycle is brewing so much life and There's nothing that you can feel that's wrong. So today I'm just sharing a little stream of consciousness from where I've been. Hello, friends of the interwebs. Thank you so much for being here to be in communion with me and all of my human feelings. I posted a video like this quite a few years ago talking about my depression while feeling depressed and I just thought I'd throw it back. There's something about talking about the muck while you're in it and expressing it and not just marveling at it in the aftermath. (laughs) You know, there's a constant ebb and flow to life and I feel like I have been pretty in the flow and I haven't been resting in the ebb part where the waves have drawn back and things feel a little chaotic and untethered. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Like there's a little bit of a precipice about to emerge, but I'm like fully drawn back, fully exposed, looking at myself and the world and feeling pretty uncomfy. I've been feeling depressed for, I feel like the past month, which isn't a very long time in all honesty, but it's just been very consistent. It's been a higher degree of this slump than I have felt in a very long time because I've been through this rodeo before it is so interesting to watch myself approach it i have been aware of my mind's tendency to want to create belief systems or narratives from this low place like any time that you're in the eternity of your feelings you start envisioning your life from the low place that you're in like oh here i am i am a depressed person i will always struggle with this i can't believe i tricked myself into thinking i was ever any other way I deserve to feel this way all of these subtle little narratives I have been going through my head and I just watch them and I'm just like this is this is bullshit like you know you're perfectly capable of joy and happiness you know this isn't actually your baseline I'm just watching these little narratives with my arms crossed just being like talk your shit it's okay, like you can let it out. And I think that the biggest distinction of feeling moments of deep depression now versus in the past is I'm still showing up to the medicine that I need. And in the past, I would feel too unworthy of, you know, being around people and friends. I wouldn't want to take up space when I didn't feel good. And now I'm perfectly capable of voicing my feelings and being in them and not needing to have it be fixed or not needing to immediately find the silver lining. And I can be around people when I don't feel good. And that is honestly a revolution because for most of my life, most of my spiritual journey as well, I feel like I have had a tendency to hide myself, even with my closest friends, just never wanting to be seen fully when I'm in the muck. And I just felt like it's convenient for them not to see this part of me. It's convenient for me not to have to expose myself in this vulnerability where like I can feel my skin just crawling and retracting when stepping into a room because I already feel raw and vulnerable. And to have someone like look into my eyes and say that they love me and say that it's okay will just make me like instantly melt and I don't know if I can handle that. Avoiding those situations where I would feel deeply loved was avoiding the truth of my reality, the truth of my being, that I am worthy of love, that it is going to be okay, that it doesn't have to feel this way all the time. And I didn't want to be in that contradiction. I just wanted to continue suing in my own little suffering. But now I I appreciate the way that my friends who see me who have seen me in all different versions of myself in all different seasons can remind me and affirm who I am literally just by acknowledging me. Literally just by being in their presence, I am reminded and um, it pulls me out of the illusion of whatever the fear is, whatever the sad heaviness is telling me. And that is so powerful and I'm not shying away from that anymore. Um, And it's also okay not to rush the process. And that's why I'm really happy that I'm making this video because I know in like 
uh, two, three weeks, I'll be feeling completely stable and grounded again, but I don't wanna glaze over this untethered feeling. Mental illness and depression and anxiety, sometimes you just become, narcissistic is a big word and it's not like a roast to people with mental illness, but you spend so much of your day thinking about yourself and your own state of being, for better or for worse, like you're just constantly like, I hurt, I can't do this, I'm sad, the world is hard for me. It's all like thoughts based around yourself rather than like, how can I be of service today? Or like, what can I do to make this person feel loved? And it is valid because there are many reasons why we're struggling with these mental health issues. And sometimes you literally do just need to be in that space because you can't pour from an empty cup, you can't operate when you're not even wanting to exist. So I get it, but maybe if I spent a little bit less time just focusing on my own suffering and focusing on relieving the suffering of others, I would actually feel better. And that happened to be the case. Every time I would do something to be of service or volunteer, I felt like my depression was gone. That's the same reason why when I went to the mental hospital when I was in high school, I felt really happy. Um, in case some of you don't know, when I was a senior in high school, I was self-harming a lot and I was having really bad life-ending thoughts and attempts and I did go to the hospital. In that scenario, I was teaching people yoga. I didn't even, I wasn't a teacher yet, but I had been going to classes a lot and so I knew a thing or two that made me feel good. I was guiding meditations and chanting and I felt like a therapist for all the other girls who were there, they happened to be a little bit younger than me or the same age and I felt so light. That alone is also a spell breaker and a curse breaker if you're struggling with mental illness and you don't have friends and you don't have community. It's just to volunteer somewhere. I just wanted to take a quick moment to let you know that today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even message messaging, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. They can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your city. And to get started, you just fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like. Then they'll match you with a therapist to help you. You'll be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours, and you can schedule a therapy session at any time that's convenient for you. If you feel like a therapist isn't a great fit, then you can switch therapists with the click of a button in your settings at no additional cost, which is amazing. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life today. Click the link in my description box or visit betterhelp.com slash hitomi. This helps this channel, but it'll also give you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so that you can connect with a therapist and get support. I love therapy and having this kind of safe space is life-changing. I think this past month has helped me to deepen my friendships because they're seeing me completely break down and cry. Going through heartbreak, I'm processing my last relationship, which I never really gave myself the space to because I've just been going and living life and in such a life cycle, going from one thing to the next with rose-colored glasses. And now I'm taking a pause. I feel like I'm in a death cycle and I'm reflecting on my last relationship and actually feeling a lot of heartbreak. There are though some friendships that are more like acquaintances that when I've spent time with these people in my little sad girl phase, it just does not feel right. It feels so awkward. It feels like actually maybe I was the one keeping that relationship going because of me pouring light into them and me having that like yes and energy of constantly bringing the vibe to the conversation or to maybe even like the sexual experience. I was the one giving so much of myself and when I'm not doing that, it's like awkward or I feel a judgment or I just feel like it's not as safe. The other thing I was going to mention is that if you are spending time with someone who has never struggled with mental illness, who has never felt deep despair or anxiety 
or people who have no childhood trauma, it can feel like an alien experience that you're having, the way that they just don't relate or don't understand, and it can feel really uncomfortable. So I recommend when you're in those sensitive states to one, maybe only spend time with people who are deeply emotionally intelligent, or if the friendship really means a lot to you, having it be a teachable moment, vocalizing what you've been through, how it manifests, what your coping methods are, and how they can best support you, how they can best love you through it. And I really don't take anything personally. I think that's another thing that has immensely shifted. I'm not going to internalize things as if everything is my fault. And if someone is judging me or something feels really awkward, or you know if you've ever had like a really good vibe with someone and then suddenly it just, it hits different, it just shifted, it feels dead, it feels like uncomfortable. I think in the past I would hold all that, like, oh, what did I do to make this so uncomfortable? Why was I so awkward? Why was I not enough? And now I'm just like, wow, we're, we're different. <laughs> like, mm, right now or maybe forever, this just isn't really working and it's okay. And I'll, I'll catch myself in a narrative like, oh, I shouldn't have said this thing or maybe I was being weird or maybe I shouldn't have let them see me in this vulnerable state. And then I'm like, oh wait, but I don't give a fuck. Like, mm, yeah, but like, it's actually, that's not the case. And I actually don't need to care and I don't need to internalize this. Of course, accountability. Of course, like I am reflecting on my habits, best believe, but it doesn't need to be so intensely self-shaming and self-deprecating the way that it can get when you're sad and the way it can get when you have low self-esteem, which let's just be real. Like I still do struggle with, but it's so much better. I actually love myself and I haven't been able to say that for most of my life. Even just being like a conventionally attractive woman on YouTube, I mean, I watch some of my past videos, especially when I'm sad, I will watch some of my past videos to remember who the fuck I am. And I'll just be like, whoa, I'm literally triggered by myself. Like I looked so good there or I, um, was in such a good season of life and I can see why it would trigger other people when they're not feeling that, when they're not feeling themselves because I'm not feeling myself and I look at it and I'm just like, damn, good for you. Like I'm glad that you <laughs> have this great life even though it's literally my life. But the funny thing is on some of those videos where I'm just radiating and in my power and feeling confident in my body and sexuality, I would get comments every now and then that were like you're so obsessed with yourself or like you're just showing off or you're so vain and i really take constructive criticism so i was like well let me check my ego like am i attaching my worth to my physical appearance am i getting validated from these comments from these videos and i completely really tried to step away from any form of validation or security in the things that change aka views public perception physical appearance like i genuinely really have tried to find stability in where I get my validation and most of that comes from my relationships and my connection to the creator but it, it almost got to a point where I like didn't want to enjoy my body because I didn't want to be vain I didn't want to come off self-obsessed everyone made it seem like such a bad thing to be enjoying this body my sexuality my beauty whatever because it's a privilege so that honestly created this really weird avoidant relationship to genuinely enjoying my body and just genuinely being like fuck yeah i'm beautiful and i'm also a good person and this isn't what i spend most of my time thinking about at all but still i'm going to enjoy myself and my ancestral inheritance and what is the alternative for me to be obsessed with someone else like there has to be a certain level of deep allyship that you have with yourself and care our uniqueness is beautiful and being intimate with ourselves and knowing ourselves deeply that feels like beauty and radiance and power to me at least when i feel most beautiful it's in those moments where i am close to myself and my center and my version of what I think love is. Beauty standards are capitalized on and the most beautiful women in the world don't feel good about themselves. It's just crazy. I think more than attacking one another, we should just be looking at the bigger picture of like, why do even people who are able-bodied and healthy as fuck and creating part of the beauty standard, they also feel like they have to perform. Why can't we all just let the soft animal of our bodies just love what they love and love themselves and be themselves regarding yourself with grace 
and regality and love that is enough to dispel a belief system that you're not worthy because you're like actually no look at look at all these things that i'm doing for myself i know how to take care of myself i'm worthy of this care no one knows me better and sometimes i'm going to be the only person who's able to validate that and remind myself why i like to be here i truly believe all of life is a stage i feel like we're all playing these different roles even the things that we enjoy our personalities are not our decision i think that's something of the spirit you know how certain people are drawn to certain songs or sounds our personalities is is part of our spirit but beyond that is the witness of it and we're just given them we're just given them we don't really choose what our preferences are what we naturally feel attuned to and it makes me feel even more like even my weird quirks those are just gifts to me those aren't even the truth of my being so I'm just going to enjoy I'm just going to get to know myself and I'm just gonna play the role of the like you know wellness youtuber right now like that's the role that I'm playing I feel like it's an archetype and we all have different archetypes throughout our life like when I had my like 12 years of feeling really deeply depressed. I was depressed girl at the grocery store. I was silent, shy, awkward girl at the party. That was my role. And I honestly wish that I saw it that way at the time. Like I wish I just owned, oh, I'm playing this character that is needed in this room for the plot. Like maybe someone needed to see me in my muck and learn something from it. Or maybe I just needed to take up space and balance the high vibe at the party with my grounded vibe with my just wanting to leave and lie down energy um and so i feel like even our insecurities are just adding to the plot like it's literally all just adding to the plot we're just these characters it really isn't that deep anything that happens in life because we are going to die nothing really matters and that existentialism can be hard to integrate sometimes but when you think of it as this archetypal character building plot narrative it's so much less personal and it, life isn't that personal like things aren't happening just to spite you you're not just inherently good or bad it's not that black and white you are complex you are nuanced you are able to make mistakes you are able to grow you are able to feel small and that's okay it's okay if you feel hopeless right now just don't elude yourself into thinking that is the finality of your experience here on earth embrace everything as good narrative for the plot even my insecurities even the way my body fluctuates even if we are cringy like embracing that as well this life is so hard sometimes and i'm just so proud of people for doing it like in any way even if they hate me even if it's a completely contradictory way to me we are all taking shape in these momentary human bodies minds and personalities and it's really nice to return to neutrality just by remembering that and just by knowing that it's all really good material and what can we do with it how can this be like conducive how can this be productive how can this be pushing the plot forward and it's really just that curiosity there's so many different ways to have the same conversation about mental health and about Spa creating space and being curious about your experience and extracting the wisdom and finding the silver lining and this is just my new metaphor and way to describe it it's just owning the archetype that you are knowing it's all good information for the plot and knowing that it is bound to shift and honestly the thing that keeps me going especially when i feel like absolute shit the way that i have been i don't want to like get too much into my own narratives and complaining i have just had such low energy and not wanted to do absolutely anything i don't even even my dreams don't feel exciting to me right now because i don't have the energy when i do put even just two percent effort into my future or into the timeline that i believe in i feel 10 percent better about myself which is a substantial amount when you feel really low that is my exit plan that is the way that i'm going to get through it is by doing one thing that helps to remind me of what i believe in and where i want to go and who i am and also an exit strategy of like even for me feeling like i might not want to do youtube for very much longer and so i'm thinking of other things that i would really enjoy to do whether that's going back to school or working on a farm or creating a small business or a pottery studio just that makes me excited it's like okay things can change and if this isn't serving me i'm going to be an active participant in what's going to happen next it's really like being an active participant in what is yoking you in life in the narrative in the plot if you are feeling like crap i just really want you to know that you're not alone and we are all going to go through these cycles at different times online when i share that i've been feeling more grounded and in flow than i've ever been i always get hundreds of comments or replies of people saying they feel the exact same way and also when i'm feeling at the bottom of the well and like just 
rotting. I get tons of comments of people saying they feel the same exact way and I just it's just such evidence that we are all going to ebb and flow at different times and it's okay and it's not personal and it might just be evidence that something needs to switch up a little bit or you're just meant to be here and just feel it and you don't need to rush your feelings especially like I haven't shared a video like this in so long and it feels really nice to just be in it so just give yourself permission to be in it and know that it doesn't have to dictate the trajectory of the rest of your life but you can just feel these feelings and you are still worthy and valid and there is nothing wrong with you you are a beautiful radiant being and also a full spectrum of emotions is available to you in this now moment you are not just a sad person you are capable of deep joy and gratitude and rapture and those feelings will come back around just know that you are capable of holding it all so thank you for just bearing witness to my testimony here at the bottom of the well i know it might seem like i'm doing great but it's honestly just because reflecting on this does make me feel better and reflecting on the ways i'm showing up differently it makes me feel like i'm exactly where i need to be and i'm feeling exactly what i need to feel this is the the closest i can get to my authentic experience of life right now and thank you for witnessing it but i will see you in a video soon i hope